Back with Rep Ryan of Titans Radio as we are getting set for the Titans season opener coming up on Sunday. Noon kickoff, Nissan Stadium. The A-team going to be here with Jim Nance and Tony Romo. First game in the for booth. Tony. Yeah. We'll see how he does. What, yes. what do you think? What do you think about Romo in the booth? First of all, I thought it was incredible that the guy retires and just immediately is planted with the number one team right. on CBS. No warm-up games. Yeah. <laughs> I just – but, look, he was a good quarterback. I'm sure he studied his rear end off. I'm sure he'll probably be good, and it will translate to that. His first outing, I don't know. We're going to see. I just wonder a little bit from what we saw in press conferences and things, and – I get that he was guarded. It's the Cowboys and all that. But does he have the personality to step up to the plate in the way that a Troy Aikman has or, a, you know, on the extreme level, John Gruden on sure. Monday Night Football? Can Tony Romo bring the color, so to speak, to the color analyst job? I, I think it's a great question. And I also would have liked to have heard what that would have been like with Jay Cutler before Ryan Tannehill went down. Because sure. his first game was supposed to be that third preseason game with the Bears on, on Fox on national television. And, uh, and I was interested to see what he would bring because he's a little more reserved, you know, and, yeah. and sour, I guess some people would say, than Tony Romo. But uh, he's uh, he's got a good broadcast partner in Jim Nance, and I'm sure he has uh, all the tools around him. Yep. So. And instead, we'll just see Jay down there in Miami in yes. a few weeks. In week in five. Week five. So right. well, we'll see how he gets Adam Gase and the Dolphins going in his first season as their quarterback. We talked a little bit about some of the rookies on the offensive side of the ball before the break. One guy who really jumped out at me during the preseason, I've talked about it on this program before, but I want to get your take, is Jayon Brown. He was a guy that they drafted in the fifth round, I think kind of under the radar mm -hmm. of a lot of people. But a couple of things is he came in sort of to fill a very specific role in my mind in that he covers tight end and pass coverage, and that has been a weakness in the past. But I think in his play, he's shown that he can be much more than just that. I think he absolutely can, and that's going to be the interesting storyline to follow with that young man as to whether he finds himself in the starting lineup eventually. Uh, he's been raved about all training camp, preseason, speed, closing speed, and we've seen it. Yeah, And, and you're right. That has been one of the Achilles heels of the Titans defense over the last couple of years is opposing tight ends. And not just, you know, Rob Gronkowski. Rob Gronkowski is, is, is top shelf, and, and he's going to get his day against most anybody. Uh, against mid, you know. Is, Who was the guy in see, San Diego three years oh. or three or four years ago that had three <laughs> touchdowns? I, I'm blanking on it because it wasn't Antonio was Gates. It, uh, it was whoever the. Dante Rosario, maybe? Uh, yes, Dante, the yeah. infamous Dante Rosario game in and, San and Diego. And look at C.J. Fedorowicz, you know, yeah. with the Texans. He just signed a three-year extension. He can thank the Titans defense yeah. for part of that. Cause Mainly just, because of the Titans. And I'm not knocking C.J. Fedorowicz, but he's not elite top level you know I would put Delaney Walker in that group I sure. wouldn't put CJ Fedorowicz but yeah you're right Jayon Brown has been brought in here to close in on that speed and I'm sure he will see some reps against a former Titan Jared Cook the tight end of yeah. the Oakland Raiders coming into town this weekend but yeah that young man smart picks up things fast, plays fast, and uh, he has the attention of Dick LeBeau and, and Mike Malarkey also. I'm, look, I'm looking over at your roster in front of you there, and the other guy you have circled, the rookie linebacker, is Josh Carraway. Yeah. He's a guy that we didn't see as much of in mm -hmm. terms of production in the preseason, but obviously a draft pick. Yes. You always put stock into those guys. But this team kept 11 linebackers. Yeah. I'm curious a little bit if he was the 11th in your mind. And is he kept as much because they wanted to ensure that he was on their roster so they could develop him for down the road and they didn't want to see him wind up someplace else? Or where does he fit right now for this football team? Yeah. I, I think it's more the former than the latter. And I would think that he would pro if he wasn't the 11th linebacker, they kept he was very close to that number uh, he's an intriguing prospect um, I think they'd like to see him put a little more weight on he's playing at 242 243 um, and I think the knock on him coming out was talking about uh, maybe not liking physical contact and 
those first few training camp practices, he was going out popping people. Mm -hmm. He wanted to show, hey, look, I'm, I can do this. I'm not afraid of contact at all. Uh, it's a seventh-round pick. They like him. Uh, and, again, here's a guy. Uh, I don't remember what star recruit he was. Maybe one. He had one offer. Uh, he thought Indiana was going to offer him. Ends up TCU offers him. And uh, the rest is history. He was a horned frog. Uh, but Josh Carraway is an interesting prospect and somebody I, I certainly think they like. Uh, and you'd think, well, 11 linebackers, gosh, that's a lot for. But, you know, three, four defenses, and, and maybe it is a little exceptional, but three, four defenses, they chew up linebackers yeah. over the course of a season. And you hope and you keep your fingers crossed that Arakpo and Morgan are well and healthy like they were last year with 19 quarterback sacks between mm -hmm. the two of them. You want to see what Kevin Dodd comes along and you know that's the I think that's, that's also another, why Brian Eric Walden right right that's exactly right and, and Kevin Dodd you want to see what that guy can do he's a 33rd overall pick um, and I think if he's healthy and, and clicking on all cylinders he's a solid backup behind, behind those two main starters at outside linebacker right we've got a couple minutes yeah. left here but I want to get to two two topics quickly offense of things to look for Sunday. First off, everybody always wants to talk about Derrick Henry around here because he was the Heisman Trophy winner. He's who we saw the most at running back mm -hmm. in the preseason because of the injury to DeMarco Murray. Mm -hmm. What's the split of carries between those two guys this season? I don't think that there is a solid, definite split. I think you will see numbers a lot like what you saw in 2016. Mike Malarkey said, he said it many times, going back to his experience when he was offensive coordinator in Pittsburgh. He said, you know what? I used to try to keep a pitch count on two backs. It got me beat too many times. I think it's DeMarco Murray's job to lose, and I think when he needs a rest or, heaven forbid, he's injured, Derrick Henry is the guy. But I would think that you would see maybe an uptick in a few carries and, and attempts and, and touchdowns, but I think it will be a lot like what you saw in 2016. There's no question Derrick Henry can do it, but I, I'm with you. I think it will be situational stuff, maybe some more goal line things, mm -hmm. maybe some late game things if they have the lead, yes. which we think they'll have more this year. And he's but, an option to catch it out of the backfield sure. also. But DeMarco Murray is the number one option there. And then real quickly, the matchup to me offensively I watched this weekend is the tackles, Lawan and Conklin, mm -hmm. against the great pass rushers of Khalil Mack and Bruce Irvin. To me, is, is that the offensive key? Oh, I think that's certainly where it starts. And <laughs> Seth Roberts, we talked about him being a Titan killer. Somebody's got to keep an eye on him and cover him up. Uh, and if Jayon Brown's over there working on on Jared Cook, you know, maybe they'll have it. But those tackles against that pass rush, I think that's where it starts. All right, before we take our final break, Titans Radio, on, Sunday, yes. on the air when? Network, Titans Radio, on the air, Titans Countdown, 11 a.m. for the noon start. But it starts on our flagship, 104.5 The Zone, at 10 a.m. with the countdown to kick off. Rhett always does great work. Mike Keith and the boys as well. Yes. We're looking forward to week number one. Rhett, thanks so much for coming in tonight. Thank I appreciate you for your having time. me, Steve. I really appreciate it. Hopefully do this again throughout the course yeah. of the year as Titans season is underway. Got to take our final break. We'll be back after this.